take a moment today to thank the boldness of our government and our shareholders. William Hamilton built his venture on the ashes of the Second World War. Copper mine he envisioned was ransacking the First Nations' ancestral territories, drawing the wrath of the local people. It definitely took nerves of steel to stay the course, despite all this hostility. Before long, in the face of William Hamilton's cold and uncompromising stance, the petitions and peaceful protests turned into sabotage, vandalism, and other criminal acts. The industrialists' private properties also encountered the wrath of the demonstrations. Carl Faubert, a veteran of the Korean War, was hired from Montreal as a private detective to shed some light on this whole thing. But at the end of his long journey to northern Quebec, the detective did not only encounter property damage, he also came face to face with the corpse of William Hamilton. The strangeness only kept building throughout the investigation. A powerful, unseasonable blizzard hit the region. Bodies frozen in unbreakable ice appeared. The local fauna began to act strangely and aggressively. Carl Faubert began to doubt his own sanity. The detective felt the weight of a gaze as if he were at the mercy of a powerful, feral creature waiting for the right moment to attack. Carl's fear was taking over, overpowering his reason. He was giving in to delirium. In that instant, he thought that the dark waters of the lake might shield him from the shapes that pursued him. From there, he had a renewed hope in civilization, or whatever was left of it. Carl knew that on one of these shores stood William Hamilton's lavish mansion, and there the detective had hopes of finding a way out of the area. A phone, a truck, who knows? Under the luxurious paneling and damask carpets, he might be able to find answers to his questions. The detective wondered about the floating debris. Had it drifted out from the shore, or had it been abandoned there in the middle of nowhere? Carl saw a boat in the distance, clearly piloted by one of his own. Had he finally made it to civilization? His hopes were immediately drowned out by the sound of gunshots. Time to flee again, and fast. swam without a thought, yet each stroke was desperate. The icy water and his wounds made him feel weaker and weaker. He had to get to shore. 